Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this next lesson we're going to take a little break from doing our pipeline tools to talk about another module which we will then be using in our next tool. So this is something I've saved for a little bit later because it can be a little bit advanced and also if you are newer to Python I don't want to really confuse you early on with not only learning Python, which is a whole new language to you, but then also an additional kind of sub uh, syntax. So I thought it would be better to leave this till the very last minute just before we need to use it so that uh, by this stage everyone should hopefully be up to the same kind of level in terms of Python. And what we're talking about today is the regular expressions module. And, and this is something that goes across uh, multiple different languages. This is not something exclusive to Python, but it is very powerful and works very nicely within Python. So we're going to be making use of it. Um, the, this, uh, just to point out, by the way, the regular expressions are actually also available in VEX, which is kind of cool. Uh, they're a little bit limited in VEX. Um, I do cover this in the VEX course, so if you are interested in that and haven't done it yet, then uh, definitely I would suggest jumping into that. And I do um, cover regular expressions in that as well. Uh, but yeah, in, in VEX it's a little limited, but in Python you can do pretty much uh, everything that regular expressions has to offer. So um, here I've got a, a web browser open and there's a really cool website that I recommend using whenever learning and testing your regular expressions, which is uh, regx101.com. Okay, so this is where I always go to test my regular expressions before putting them into into Python. Now, what a regular expression is, it's essentially we're we're working with strings and we're trying to search within those strings for certain patterns. It's kind of like having, you know, wild cards or doing a, you know, uh, like a search, search and replace kind of function within within a string, uh, you know, so something like a string dot find, you know, like something you're like sort looking for a certain token, but regular expressions handles a lot more. It is very complex, and in fact, here today I'm going to cover everything that we're going to need to know and certainly try and give you a like a crash course on on a lot of it but there are some super in-depth crazy things you can do with regular expressions so it's kind of like we're going to cover the basics here and the things that you're going to do for almost stage one of using regular expressions but there is another level above that which you know it's got a basically a very high ceiling of what you can do actually looping through and, and recursively pulling um, chunks out of a, a string. So, but don't worry, we're gonna start with the basics. Uh, so, first thing we're gonna do um, in here is, on the left-hand side, I just wanna point out that there are different language, uh, sort of, you know, under this uh, flavor kind of tab. And it won't necessarily break everything if you're not under Python because the language is pretty um, pretty much the same but there are certain slight differences so depending on what you're doing if you're not within the right language here certain things will appear to work and yet when you go and insert them in your Python um, script it's not going to work because you've used maybe the wrong syntax for creating a group or something which is one of the things where it is different per language so best thing to do is just immediately come in and under flavor just switch it to python just so that we actually are testing correctly now what we're going to do is in the test string here we can insert any number of sort of strings or type a bunch of things here and then we start typing our regular expression and it is going to show us everything that we're selecting from that test string and then it even helps explain on the side here exactly what it's doing, why it's finding those matches. Uh, it gives you information about the match that it has found. And it's got a reference guide over here for a lot of the, um, the tokens and stuff that you would use to create uh, your regular expressions. So super cool tool. This, this website is amazing. Now, so let's, let's, just, let's just get going for any of you though 
who are maybe still struggling to uh, see what this the purpose of this is you'll see as we go you'll, you'll kind of understand why we need this and particularly when we you build our next tool which is going to be the uh, save scene script which now uses our scene data to save our scene kind of automatically in a certain place and with a very strict naming convention we obviously need to work with strings quite extensively and so we need regular expressions okay so in here I'm just going to type something and I can give multiple lines as well so I'm going to type this is a test string uh, example and I'm also going to create put a, a bunch of like of the same character just because we're going to talk about something like that and if you guys want to I mean you can you're welcome to go and type in uh, whatever else you want and whatever and you can just give multiple lines here now it does have certain um, little uh, kind of flags over here that you can use on this for example multi-line is basically treating each of these as multiple lines or multiple examples so it's going to go through and match this one and separately kind of match this line as opposed to if multi-line is off then it's going to actually treat the whole thing as one single multi-line string right instead of multiple single lines um, and you know there's a there's case insensitive and um, single line and so there's a whole bunch of flags that we can do to um, alter how it works here and these flags are similar to the flags that we're going to actually apply in Python so um, we'll get around to that but for now you can basically leave this um, as is on GM mode right so global and multi-line which will be on by default so that's totally fine okay so so what we can do here is we're essentially going to um, we're, we're trying to match things from the string right but then obviously we can get information from that matching so we can type explicit uh, letters or characters that we want to match so for example as, as I even start typing the letter T you'll see that it goes and it will show you how many matches it has found for that right so we've got six different matches and it will show you which line uh, like which um, character it's at so so I can type for example the word test and it's going to then find test like one one match of the full word test okay and it shows me exactly where that came from and it's going to tell you here exactly why it was able to match the word test there so it found the word test literally okay and it is case sensitive so if I go and replace the last with a capital T it's not going to find it okay so we can do that right but obviously I mean that's pretty simple we could do a you know string dot um, find uh, function and it would give us exactly that as well so this is obviously not something special but what we can do now is insert wildcards now these wildcards I'm gonna point out are not the same as your what you'd expect from normal kind of wildcard syntax especially like within Houdini where you can use um, star to say any you know just any characters from that point onwards okay this is a little bit different yes we are going to use star as a special character but it, it does not mean the same thing as your normal uh, wildcard syntax so please be very careful whether you're using um, regex or regex uh, whichever one whichever way you say it and uh, versus normal wildcards okay so one of the wildcards that we have the most common wildcard um, which essentially is, it's kind of like is putting the star will accept any character so basically if I type the letter T E okay and then instead of, if see if I push s now it's only going to have the one match but T E on its own had two different matches because it's T E there and T E inside of whatever all right now if I put a dot just a just a dot this matches any character okay doesn't matter what that character is it will match it so it's going to match here tes and it's also going to match tev because dot is a replacement for any single character so i would have to put another dot to grab the full word test and also teve okay so you can put multiple of these but each one represents any 
character, including if I now put a, another one, you'll see that it grabs the space as a character as well. Okay, so very powerful, but obviously you need to be um, very careful of what it is selecting. Now, if you want to be more specific about what you're selecting, so you want a wild card, but with some kind of rules to it. We can now look at, um, and I'm just going to point out over here, they are all in this. In fact, a lot of what I'm talking about is listed under the common tokens because, I mean, that's exactly what we're here to do is learn the most common use of this first. So this is a very good reference for you, but I'm going to be talking you through this in kind of a, a specific um, order so that we can understand and I'll show you examples. So you'll see here that any single character is just a dot and also you can click on this and it actually explains and gives you a little example. So very useful resource for learning um, regular expressions. And we're going to be talking about these now. So for example, uh, slash, so backslash s is any white space character. Okay. So right now I'm getting no matches because there is nowhere in the string where it has T E and then a white space. Okay. But I can put S T right. And then a white space or for example, T and a white space is only going to match there because there are multiple T's in the, in our string here but only one of them has an actual space after it. Okay, keeping in mind that this at the end here, it does not have a space, right? Uh, if I hit enter, then yes, it does have a space, but now here it does not, right? So <clears throat> that matches a white space and then a capital letter of the same always does none. So in this case, it's cap, um, sort of lowercase s is any white space, capital S is any non white space character. So that's going to say that it will see you'll see here it does not match this T because it's matching every T and a non space white space character afterwards. So it's getting TH, it's getting TE, TR, TE, but it does not grab this one or this one because afterwards after this one, there is a white space. And after this one, there is nothing. And so neither of the two of these qualify for what we've asked for. Okay. <clears throat> now the same thing happens with digits. Okay. So we can go and put T and then a lowercase d. And that's going to match any digit. So it's the equivalent of 0 to 9. Right. So it's going to match any single digit. Now obviously we don't have any digits in here at the moment. But let's say I go at the end here and put uh, any any digit and it's going to grab that. Okay. Now, if you want to specify which digits, we'll get around to that. So I'll show you that soon. <clears throat> but in this case, this is going to grab any digit. Right. Uh, so zero to. But see now, if I put two digits, it will not grab that because it is only grabbing any one single digit. And then capital D is going to do exactly the opposite. So it's going to grab any non digit. So it will grab white spaces. It will grab characters that are not digits, but it will not grab digits. And so this T is the one that gets ignored. Okay. Then W is a word character. Okay. So this essentially a word character is any digit, any character like normal letters and underscores, but not spaces. Okay, so if we go and put us an underscore there, then this counts. So T underscore because underscore is a word character. All right. And then uh, if we go and say uh, capital W, then it's any non word <clears throat> character. So it will grab white spaces, but it also grabs special characters. Um, like a, a plus see that's a that's a non word character so it's going to specifically grab we're telling it literally go grab a t and then any non word character that you can find okay right so those are our main kind of wild cards but sometimes we want to grab sort of multiple things um, we we don't want to grab just every single character especially if we wanted to let's say grabbing uh, these 
um, A's, right? If I just grab, say, A, it's matching each and every single A as its own match. So you'll see here we have 16 matches, okay? But sometimes we want to, as one match, we want to duplicate what we're asking for, okay? Which can include wildcards. So we want to then go grab, you know, but you don't want to literally go A dot 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 to specifically have to go and tell it, oh, well, I want this many characters, right? We, we want to be able to actually give it um, an easier way of telling it to search for, for multiple things, right? So uh, now these in here are called um, quantifiers, okay? So you can come and have a look at the quantifier section as well for more information. But uh, basically the question mark is, it stands for zero or one, okay? So, but it, it it quantifies this A, right? So it's not just in addition. If we wanted an A, a literal A, and then in addition to that, we want any character, but zero or one of it, then it would be dot question mark. Because then you see the question mark is quantifying the, the dot, not the A, right? So in this case, it would give an A and a question mark. What it's saying is it will grab, it will count as a match, if it finds zero or one of this character. So you see what it's actually doing now, if we look at how many matches we've got, we've got tons, we've got 68 matches. And the reason for that is half of the matches are empty, okay? Every now and then you'll see there's an A, grabs an A, but then this is empty, 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 then there's a bunch of A's, then empty, empty. You see, this is allowing all of these sort of between every character, it's essentially defaulting down to zero matches and finding nothing. Okay, so in some cases, this is obviously not uh, not what we want. But for example, let's say we had a dot, right? It's going to say that I literally need an A, and then I'm going to grab any other character after that, but also that includes no character after that, right? So if I end my sentence with an A, and there's nothing after it, it will now still allow A to be selected. Whereas if I didn't qualify it with a question mark, then it will it wants there to be something afterwards, and so this A does not count, but these ones do. Okay, so I go and put the question mark back, and it says zero or one extra character after an A, right? So this has zero characters after the A, this one has one character after the A. Okay. Now, star is zero or more, okay? So it can be, can be zero, it still can be zero. So this A over here, for example, could be a match and could select all, you know, as, as many as you want, right? So for example, let's, let's take all of this away and just have an A. Here. So a single A here will still count as a match because it has an A and then it has zero additional characters, okay, because star is still zero or unlimited, but it will select as many as it can, okay. Now this star is what's called a greedy quantifier. So you can see there uh, just above my um, cursor, it actually in brackets says greedy. Okay, so it's good to know that uh, what this does. What it means is it will select as many as it can, right? So like I said, if we go back to having our full sentence here, this A and this A are totally being overwritten and not even included as a match on their own because this A is being greedy. It's grabbing an A and then as many additional characters as it possibly can. So it keeps grabbing all of them until it reaches the end of the sentence basically well because these because we're in multi-line mode it it keeps, um, treats each line as a separate match right um, so <clears throat> if we put it in a, I think a single line here then you'll see that it specifically goes from this a there's only a single match one match because it goes from that a and grabs everything it possibly can okay but we can uh, go back to just a normal multi-line mode and it'll now grab three matches because we're on three separate examples. Okay, so that's a greedy qualifier, uh, quantifier, sorry. 
And then we also have another one, which is a uh, plus. Now plus is also greedy, and but plus is different only in one way, that it matches between one and unlimited times. Okay, so zero is not acceptable with a plus, but it's still greedy. So in this case, it man grabs all of the A's because it finds the first one, which is literally matched. Then the second one is just a dot. So it's any character, but then it goes just more and more and more and more and more. Okay, but as long as it finds at least one. Now, if we go in and took this, well, let, let me just create a new line here where I have to put just a single A you'll see that that single A does not match because it has nothing after it and plus once one or unlimited. So if I give it at least one more character there, then it'll become a match, okay? Take it away and it will not be a match, but with nothing there, if I have a star, that will match A because it's zero to unlimited times, okay? And now with either of these two, so these two greedy qualifiers, plus and star, we can, add, we can make it lazy, right? Using a question mark. Okay, now do not get confused by just putting dot and a question mark, right? Which was select zero or one. Okay, so very specifically, it's gonna grab either zero, which is fine. So in this case, it'll match or one extra character, okay? but it's greedy again you see there in brackets it's greedy so when given the choice it will always select two because technically this could have selected just one a and this could have selected one a and then one and so each a would be its own match but no given the choice it will take as many as it possibly can in this case two a's two a's two a's here a m a space a t a n right but it will allow zero as well. That's what a question mark means. Now, when we have a star and a question mark or a plus and a question mark, that is not, this question mark is now making the plus or the star lazy. It's a separate special character. And you'll find that a lot in regular expressions is that sometimes a certain character, depending on the context, does entirely different things. Okay, so we need to be very careful with our syntax with regular expressions. Okay, it can do a lot of powerful things, but it can also be very confusing. So it takes a little bit of practice. Okay, but there's plenty of resources out there, loads of examples, and, and there's a great help file over here. So if you put the time in, uh, believe me, you'll use this lots in your coding. Now, making something lazy, what this does is it basically says instead of taking as many matches as possible, it will take as few as, as possible, right? But sometimes that means it, it because you think lazy, if it's as few as possible, means it'll just grab zero. But sometimes it needs to grab something, and that'll be because we follow it up with something else. So let me show you what I mean. So first of all here, plus is saying one to unlimited times, but because it's lazy, it's gonna grab only one. So in this case, it will not grab this because it's got a plus, not a star. So zero additional characters is not relevant. So that does not get selected. But in this case, for example, it's gonna grab A and then T, and then it's gonna stop there. Because, because of the plus, one is the minimum, and because of the question mark, it's gonna stop at the minimum instead of taking the maximum. So if I take that away, you'll see that AT just keeps selecting and keeps selecting and it's really, really greedy. Put a question mark in there and suddenly it stops at the bare minimum that it possibly can, okay? And then same with a star, but with a star zero is fine. And so in this case, A dot star question mark is exactly the same as just A because we're basically saying uh, go and select another character, uh, any number of those other characters between zero and unlimited, but select as few of them as possible. So in other words, don't do anything, right? But what if we went and put something else after this now? So for example, let me go and put the character E and let's see what that does. Now, what this is saying is 
go and f literally find an A. Okay, so find an A somewhere in here. So it starts at the beginning and it starts scanning and it finds an A and it goes, right, I found an A. What's next in the list? And it has to match everything here, otherwise it will not count. So then it says, well, I want you to select another character, any character, it doesn't matter what, but as many of them as you need to, but be as lazy as possible. So select as few as you possibly can and then literally find an E. So in order to find that E, it has to select a few characters in the middle here, All right? So it hits the A, then it says, okay, well, I need to find an E, so I'm gonna keep going, but I'm, gonna, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna stop as soon as I can. So it goes a space, and then it goes, All right, well, I haven't found an E, I'm gonna keep going, hits a T, right? Then it goes, ah, yes, I found an E, that's great, so I'm gonna stop here. So this, now finds a underscore, oh sorry, a space T E. Same as here, it finds a M P L E. Now you see what's really cool and powerful with regular expressions is how, you see here it's, it's selected um, five characters, but this match has only selected four characters. This one's only selected three. Because of this, the nature of these um, wild cards we're able to essentially grab multiple different instances of this match okay and you see if we didn't say star uh, sorry dot which is any character if we were specific about what character so for example let's say a non white space character so uh, backslash s means that it must be any character but not a space okay then you'll see that we don't get our A space T E because that's a space. So although we say find an A and then select a bunch of characters, but as few as possible, but then go and find an E, it hits something which it cannot match. It says I, I've hit a non -space, white space character and you're telling me I cannot select those. So I know that I have failed to find an E before hitting the, the thing that you told me I'm not allowed to grab but our end of example and over here our ATE also still matches because it doesn't have to cross a space, a white space character, okay? Right, so that's the difference sort of between um, lazy and uh, greedy um, quantifiers. And you'll see here when we hover over it even selects in like puts a little box around the star and the question mark to show you that that is actually one special character. The star on its own is one, but star with a question mark changes it to be star, but a lazy version of star. It is not, the question mark is not its own separate special character. Same as over here, when we highlight the backslash S is one special character. The slash on its own does nothing, but slash S does something. Okay, so. This is why I love this uh, website because it actually really teaches you how to use regular expressions and gives you tons of information. So really fantastic. Now, what if we want to select a very specific number, right? We, we know we can do one, we, well, we can do zero or one with a question mark. We can do zero to unlimited with star and we can do one to unlimited with plus, but those are very broad numbers. Like we literally have zero, one and unlimited. What if we want three? You know, very specific number. So we can do that using curly braces, right? And then inside of that, we give it a number. So here it is going to specifically grab only exactly three A's, right? And remember, this is part of it. This is quantifying the A. So it's not an A and then a bunch of things. It's literally saying, I want exactly three A's. Right. So instead of having to type it like this, which we would get the same result, right? But I want to say, you know, we don't want to have to type it like that, especially imagine if you wanted a hundred of them, then that would be terrible, right? So we say go and select exactly three A's. Now if we went and said uh, four, then it's going to grab four there, four there, four there, right? Go and select five and you'll see at the end here, we've even got some leftover A's because We've got five selected, another five, and then two, okay? So clearly we've obviously got 12 A's over here. 
And if we are on a, something that's not divisible by 12, then you'll see we'll end up with leftovers because it is very specific about selecting five. But you'll also notice that it, uh, which is something important to understand about re regular expressions, it goes from the beginning to the end. It, it scans our string from left to right like we would read. So it does these first five, then these first five. Okay, it doesn't just select a random five or you know grab the five from the end first and end up with a gap in the middle. It goes left to right. Okay. Now inside of these curly braces though, what we can do is specify other numbers. And it's kind of like when we were doing slices with um, arrays and uh, in which includes strings, okay? Where you can give it a single number and that grabs one in, um, index. Well, in this case, it's one specific number. But what we can do is provide a range. So we could say, uh, if we say three comma, that means three or more, okay? So it matches between three and unlimited times, and it is greedy, okay? And you can obviously quantify that with a question mark again to make it lazy. So it'll say between three and unlimited, but try stop at three. And if you can't stop at three, try stop at four, and just, just do as little work as you possibly can, okay? So, now, if we go and fill something in after the comma, so three comma six, what that means is select between three and six characters. So three, if you have, you, you know, if you have to stop at three, if you only find three, so here the A, single A on its own doesn't do anything. Two A's doesn't do anything. As soon as there's a third one, it now counts. That counts as a match because it meets the minimum requirements. But I can add a fourth one and it's still now it doesn't have a leftover A at the end because I'm saying between three and six. So I do another one and another one and it still keeps matching and only now when I add one more, now it can't match again. And then I put another one, still can't match again. As soon as there's a third one, it now matches again. So it's the minimum requirements, okay? And that's because not only is it between three and six, but it's also greedy. So we can make this lazy if we want by putting a question mark and now it's saying between three and six, but you know, do do the minimum, right? So we put an A, it still doesn't count because these are it's, uh, grabbing its absolute bare minimum. Now we add a third one and now we'll match that as another group, okay? Right. So, oh, and uh, uh, you can also, um, just want to point out, you can do comma six, which means it's going to grab between zero and six times. Uh, but this... I mean, you can do it if you really want to, but it, it gives you the same problem as before where we've got like literally these empty matches, which uh, is not normally desirable. So you kind of, you want to be very specific about saying, okay, well, maybe between one and six is normally at least what you'd, what you'd use. Okay, so you don't often see it where it's comma something because you normally want, you know, not non-empty matches. One comma six means match one or two or three, but up to six. Okay, and then we can say whether it should be lazy or not. Right, <clears throat> now, what if we want uh, kind of options here as well? So for example, so I say A and then dot. Now dot is saying any character, absolutely any character. But I can be more specific and I can go and say, well, a digit or non-digit or a white space or non-white space, okay? That's that's kind of predefined for me, you know, what, what counts as a white space or not. What if I want to say, okay, well, I want I want to select the letter A, and I want to select any letter that follows A, but not M. Okay, I just got a, a serious problem with the letter M, and I don't want it in my groups. I just want to select anything that follows, but you know, not an M, right? Or what if I want to say, select between a very specific set of, of characters, you know, so A and uh, T or an S, okay? So what we do for this is we use square brackets, okay? Now, this square brackets, remember, this is adding an extra character. We're not um, quantifying the A, so the A is literal, so it's going to match it first, and then it's going to look for another character. So what we're building here is another character, but we're building a list of options. So, for example, if we just said ABC, okay, what that means is it's basically going to grab an A, and then it's gonna grab one more character. So even though this looks like three, this counts as one. 
and it's saying go and select one character but from this list of options so in this case it's just found another a okay that's a bit boring because obviously you know we've done that before so let's go and put in a t and uh, an m okay so so let's have a look at this we've got a but then we're selecting a t or an m that follows it so here there's an a but because the letter that follows it is not in our list it will not select this one but it selects this and it selects there okay it won't get any of these because a is not in our list right and what we can do is we can do the exact same thing but if we give it a this um I never remember what this character is called, but the sort of the upward arrow, uh, which on I think on most keyboards or at least here, uh, Shift Six does it. Um, I don't know uh, what it is. Maybe I think uh, American keyboards are different, and um, I think Chinese keyboards are different as well. So I don't know, but that upward upward arrow. Okay. This says accept, so it will basically not, right? So it will ex accept any character so it's kind of like a dot except what's in our list right so it ignores a t because it doesn't like that it doesn't like the am but everything else now matches including spaces right but if we didn't want a space then we could just go and include that so you can actually literally insert a space there and now it says okay well that doesn't count okay and then we can also give options so we can in round brackets we can give uh, for example we could say uh, let, let's give it a T and then I'm gonna put the vertical line okay and then an M right now this is basically matching the A and then the it's saying match a T or an M now what's the difference between this versus going uh, you know TM like that right well this first of all um, actually counts as its own uh, little subgroup which you'll you'll see uh, I'm going to talk about groups later so it does come up as its own group but um, besides the fact that it counts as an actual group it still does the full match okay so the a AM for example is a full match and M is in its own group okay so that doesn't mean that it has split them up it just means that AM is in it is selected you'll see here if you go above my cursor next to group zero it says am but then group one is m okay so that's in addition that doesn't matter the the group really but what the main difference here is that i can do multiple things so for example i could say tev okay so match a followed by all three of these characters not not any of them but literally all three okay so if we had a followed by another t like let's let's put that over here i type the word a t still not going to match it because it needs the e and it needs the v in order to create a match but alternatively instead of all three characters if there was just an m it would match okay so it says basically select that or this okay and uh, actually, I've never tried this before, but let's try see uh, if you can give it multiple um, ors. I imagine you would be able to. So let's give it a, I don't know, let's just give it, give it a G, okay? So then after the A, if we have a G, there, there we go. So it matches Gs, it matches Ms or Tevs. Or you could you could add some random characters over here, and then it will only match it if we hit all of those ors, okay? Well, everything within the or. All right. So those those are our ways of sort of having options of of selecting something within a range or, or sort of optional lists of characters. Um, now you can do the same thing with ranges as well. Okay, uh, and this kind of matches the the ASCII um, characters. So. Uh, so because no, obviously number ranges are easy like zero to nine is easy but you, you know it does actually follow ascii so your a b c d is a sequence of characters so for example let's say i said um in square brackets we can just put remember if we put characters next to one another they all count as a list um but we don't want to have to go a b c d e f g 
H I J K L M to all to get all the way to M, right? I can just go A to M. And now it's going to grab everything between A and M, but not afterwards. So it'll grab A M, but it's not going to grab A T because T is not included in my range over here. My range goes only up to M. Okay. And, and then you'll see there, it shows you even the index number of the, um, of that character. And I, I believe that's in the ASCII um, list, right? Which because it's following ASCII means that the um, capital letters are separate, right? So this is case sensitive. So if I, if I even had an A, for example, over here, A, B, but a capital B, this will not select it, right? Okay, well, actually, that's being selected in that group over there. But maybe at the end over here, A, B will not select anything. Even though B is between A and M, it's not capitalized, so that doesn't count. But I can go and add it at the end. So you'll see this. Like, Don't get this mixed up. It's not separated by anything like a comma or something, so that can look a little confusing. But this is basically saying between A and M, and in addition, I want you to match capital Bs. But instead of that, like we could have a, just another range. So we could say A to M in capitals. So now this will select A to M or A to M in lower and capitals following an A. All right. Uh, and then we can also have not ranges as well. You know, so we can say uh, anything but not that, right? So we can just put the accept sign over there, that upward um, arrow, and just say, well, A followed by anything other than something between A and M, okay? Uh, and you'll see that there is kind of a range equivalent when we talk about any of these other uh, characters, like our non-white space character or something. Um, it often pops up, like when we're typing that, like here, if I just go and put um, dot and hover over it. Okay, no, wait, that one doesn't do it. Um, D. Yeah, so you see it says equal to, and then in square brackets, zero to nine. Because zero to nine means it's gonna select any digit, right? That's the only digits we have available is zero to nine. So it's gonna select one of those. Or capital D is equivalent to the accept and then zero to nine. All right, so that's our ranges. Now we also have a few special characters that help us specify kind of special locations within this string. So for example, what if I want to select an A followed by something, just anything, right? And it doesn't, doesn't matter, but well, like what it follows, but then I want that last character to be at the end of a line. Okay, so at the end of the string. And so we can use, in this case, the, the, the character for the end of the string is a dollar sign. Okay, so although a and then dot, right, so any character could be here, so a m, it specifies that this needs to be at the end of a line. So it will only hit these two over here, A, B, and A, B, because they're at the end, right? If I put a space, this will not select anymore because there is another character following it, right? Uh, even, so, uh, so then uh, conversely, we can do a beginning of uh, a line. So for this, we can put, but obviously we need to put it at the beginning here because that makes sense that we need to start at the beginning of a line and then select things okay and what we, what we do is we use the this character again so so once again I'm going to specify be very careful of your syntax this counts as multiple special characters it counts as the um, it asserts the position at the start of a line you see what that says above there right so that's what it does there in that case but inside of our square brackets it does something different right so depending on the context, it's gonna do something very specific. So in this case, we've got A followed by any character, but only when this is at the beginning of a, of a string. So it ignores this one, ignores this, but it will grab that and that. Okay. Now, something else we have, other sort of boundaries besides lines is words. So 
we can specify, let's go back to using TE, right? Because we had a couple of them um, in here. Well, let's even go and add one at the end here. Oh, so I'm just gonna add that and uh, let me go. I don't know what a text sample is, but uh, we'll assume it's a real thing. So TE, right? But then we can specify a word boundary with slash B. Okay, now what slash B is saying is that that character needs to be at the end of a word. So in other words, afterwards, there needs to be some sort of white space. Okay, so for example, well, well afterwards or before. Okay, so if I put it before here, so slash B T E, what that means is if T E was the start of a word, then yes, it'll grab that. But over here, TE still exists, but it's not the beginning of a word, so it ignores it. And I can obviously do the opposite with a capital B, saying ignore the ones where it's TE, but at the beginning of a word, but everywhere else it's acceptable. Okay, Are you guys starting to see how powerful this can be? Because we can create these really crazy sets of rules where we can go through a string and actually teach it, hey, go and look for this word and then look for this very specific character or set of characters, but with an, an extra option, and then select from there up until this point, but skipping these characters. You're essentially teaching this to look through strings and read it for you. Okay. Now, something we're going to want to do with this is create groups, because sometimes you want to go through and grab multiple bits of the string and separate them into different groups or maybe find how many groups you have so how many matches you found and you want to do things uh, very specific to those groups so sometimes you want to refer to the group through a name or an I index okay so for example in here if I go and put let's say we just say the word um, test well or we can say t and then dot star question mark we'll make it lazy but then T, okay? So in this case, it's gonna go grab, it's gonna start with a T, it's gonna grab any number between zero and unlimited other characters, but as lazy as possible, and then a T. So in this case, it hits this T and then selects as few characters as it can until it hits the next T, then stops. Here it does the same thing, T, then as few characters as possible and stops. This here, it tries, but it fails because it hits the end of a line. Finds nothing in here, finds another T here, selects as much as it can and stops, right? So we've got three matches. Now, what if we wanna go and put this in a group? Now the group context, uh, the syntax is a bit different depending on um, what, your, uh, what context you're well, what language you're in. And here specifically for Python, we use uh, this, okay? So it's in round brackets, we include everything. Now, if I just go and chuck it all in round brackets, they will be put into a group, okay? It's like this, but it's basically the exact same as a, as a full match. So there's there's no real difference, okay? No discernible difference. What we want to do is be able to specify that this is actually a group and that I want to give it a name. So we give a question mark and capital P at the beginning of this. So open brackets, question mark, capital P, and then inside of these two um, sort of greater than and uh, less than signs, we include our name for our group. Then we have all the actual characters that we're trying to match with, and then we complete the group with a round bracket okay so in here I'm going to put something like I'll just call it uh, my group okay you can call it whatever you want and you don't you don't have to put quotes to show that that's a string like a name of a group this it's just exactly what I've got here is how we call these groups that we've created we call them my group right so now remember it's matching multiple times here so my group is finding that and over here my groups finding that but we've been able to give it a specific group name which helps us later on when we want to refer to this okay a good example by the way if you're wondering why we would do this is is we would go through uh, maybe a, 
a path to a file okay so we'd have something like c colon backslash and then we'd have my folder blah and then file dot you know whatever let's say dot dot bgo okay so you'd ha you'd have some kind of path like this now what you could do is use groups to go through and grab uh, different things so for example we'd grab the drive right so we want some sort of um, drive name which is always a capital letter right so we'd want to be specific about which character okay so it's not just any character so we're going to go a to z uh, a capital a to capital z right uh, followed by oh, it's always going to have a colon and then it's always going to have a backslash but in this case we have to give two backslashes because we need to escape the first one okay so backslash backslash literally matches a single backslash okay it's very similar to um, escaping in uh, in uh, Python strings okay now we want to grab that we then following that want to grab um, any number of characters right and then up to a uh, another backslash right and then we want to still grab more characters right uh, because we want to grab the file but we want to also split it over here so we specifically want to grab a dot now obviously a dot it means any character so what we need to do is go and escape that character so backslash dot get, literally matches a single dot and then dot star and we want to make sure that we don't have more after this for example like where we have dot bgo dot sc or something so we can specify that we want this to be the end of the string okay um, and now what we can do is go through and add groups okay and maybe double check that this is not um, selecting random things that we weren't sure of so I'm gonna wrap all of this up to there in one group okay because that's my drive then I want to wrap this all up um, as my path okay and then I'm gonna wrap this as my um, well actually let's take it one step further we're gonna wrap that as my um, file name and then that as my extension okay and now what we want to do is actually give these groups names so this is where why we would do something like that so it's going to be um, question mark P and then this would be called drive and then here we'd say something um, question mark P and then we'd call this uh, path and then in here question mark P I would call this file and then in the final group question mark P ext for extension okay so now I just want to point out how crazy re regular expressions looks when you don't really know what it's doing so do not be intimidated when you see like really bizarre looking um, strings of just crazy characters or whatever it takes a little while but once you get used to what regular expressions is doing then actually it's not so bad and you just have to work through it one bit at a time but even if I come across someone else's script and they've got regular expressions in it I copy paste it out of there and put it in this uh, regx 101 because look how this divides it up for us easy it's much easier than when you're looking at that as a giant string like if I just go and chuck this in here like that that looks that looks bizarre right I don't it's very hard until you've got a lot of experience with this actually to read through this and go oh yeah I see what's happening there so just stick it in here and it's gonna break it up for you so you'll see here on the right now it's actually named my groups so there's my drive and my drive is C colon backslash and then my path is that right my file and then my extension right so this is one of the most common ways that I use these um, group names so now the once we do if we feed this in as our regular expression we're going to then be able to kind of um, specifically pull the drive out of this or the, if we want to know what extension we're looking at okay even though we may want to use the full path to that um, file 
the first thing we can do is just grab the extension group and say, is it a BGO or is it a VDB? Just so that I know what we're doing with it or something. Okay, so very, very important. Okay, now within these groups, uh, and it kind of falls under the category of groups, but uh, it's, it's something, something a little bit more complicated is um, look aheads and look back, look, look behinds, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to just uh, put this over here, uh, just in case we want to go back to that. But we're going to do, we're going to sort of use our original example over here. And I'm going to show you what a look ahead and a look behind uh, does. Okay. So, so there, there's, there's two, two kinds, right? Look ahead and look behind. And then within each kind, there are two types as well, positive and negative. So, Essentially, what we're asking in the string is, you know, I can, I can go and, for example, put the letter T, okay? So I say, go and find a, a, a T and a, a non-space character, okay? So go match two characters, but now look at how many we've, we've got, right? But now what I want to do is say, I don't want you to go and select more characters, Okay, I want you to stop at this point and just give me these two characters, but only if you look ahead of yourself and find sort of another T later on. Okay, so for example, here, this guy, T in the tech sample, right? He, he has no other T's later on, so he's got to stop. Like, I don't want that. Okay, but... I want ones, for example, to the, for the word test, okay? So I want to see if it's the word test, but I don't want to check for the whole word for some reason or whatever, okay? So tell me, look ahead, see if you can find another T, and, but don't select it. Just if, you have, if the answer to that question is yes, there's another T later on in the same line, then give me just the two characters that you just gave me, okay? So... What we do, so with a positive positive look ahead, right? And I wouldn't suggest that you try and memorize this. There are actually group, yeah. Um, there's positive look ahead, negative look ahead, and uh, positive look behind and negative look behind. So these are the four we're talking about, okay? And there's the syntax for it. So you don't need to try and memorize these, okay? Like honestly, I've been doing this for years and I don't remember them, okay? I just know that they exist because, you know, there's no ways. It just, you know that it's there. Every time you use it, you go and just read, okay? Um, so question mark equals and then something we give it uh, whatever we want to match right but what we're doing here is essentially giving it what we would match if we were actually including it in the group okay so we can give it an st very specifically but we don't really want to do that what we could do is put us dot star so select any number of characters up until a t and then but instead of selecting it, like in this case, we just still want the first two letters, but only if it's able to select more like this. So we would include this dot star T in round brackets, as, but then qualify it with this question mark equals. Okay. So what we're saying here, let's read through this, because you'll see here it has not included this one, but it has included these. Right, and it hasn't included this either. So <clears throat> let's analyze this. So literally go and match a T, then literally, well, then go and match any non white space character. Okay, so this T over here doesn't count because it's got a white space afterwards, so that just stops right, right away. But all of these are finding a T and finding something that's not a white space. Then it's looking ahead, selecting any number between zero and unlimited times of other additional characters up until it finds a T. So the T could be immediate, right? We could insert a T over here and it would still count, right? Because this one is looking ahead and finding this T, but not selecting it. And because it's not selected, you'll see here, it actually even ends up counting as its own group because it has a non-white space character afterwards. And when it looks ahead, it finds another T. Okay, so this one counts as a group and this one counts as a group, but this one's group is relative to the fact that it finds another T over here. Okay, and if it couldn't find that T there, 
then it wouldn't count. Okay, in this case it does because it still finds one here because we've told it you can look as far ahead as you want. Okay, so <clears throat> that's a positive look ahead and then obviously a negative look ahead is the opposite. You're basically just saying, um, and I think the, uh, the syntax is with a, an exclamation mark, it's just the inverse. It's saying, I want you to look ahead as many characters as you need to to find another T and if you do find one, then do not count yourself as a correct match so the you know it's just literally inverted what we just did okay and then you can also have look behinds so for example let's type now, now obviously we're looking behind we put this ahead of what we're looking for because we want to find something but don't select it then select other characters only if this all matches okay so we're, we're basically saying um, the same thing t slash s but ahead of that we're going to put a positive look behind so that is question mark left arrow equals and then let's just say um, a dot okay and then close that right so what we're saying here is select a t and any non white space character but only if before the T you find an A and a dot. Like, so A and anything else. So in this case, it finds an A, it finds something else, and then selects the T and the E. Okay. Here, finds an A, finds something, and then finds a T and an E. And that's totally fine. But over here, finds a T and an E but it's not preceded by an A and another character, so it will not count. Okay. All right, so this, uh, this lesson has run a bit long, so I'm gonna sort of break it up into two parts, um, but we're gonna move over to showing you now how these expressions, how regular expressions, now that you know how to build a regular expression, how we're gonna go and apply this in Python including the which uh, functions can call it and, and like how we can work with the groups, the sub functions, all of that. Okay, so that will be in the next lesson.